Earlier this month, the first Northrop Grumman E-2D Advanced Hawkeye Airborne Early Warning Aircraft equipped with aerial refueling capability made its first flight. The ability to receive fuel addresses one of the few shortcomings of the new airborne surveillance plane, which acts as the airborne eyes and ears of a U.S. Navy carrier strike group. Indeed, the E-2D is the centerpiece of the Naval Integrated Fire Control Counter-Air Battle Network, which will eventually allow every platform in the strike group to seamlessly act as either a sensor or shooter. The Northrop Grumman Aerial Refueling Team continues to put outstanding effort into bringing this much-needed capability to the E-2D Advanced Hawkeye and our warfighters who rely on it. Said Captain Keith Hash, Naval Air Systems Command's Program Manager for the E-2C2 Airborne Tactical Data System Program Office. The addition of the aerial refueling capability will allow the E-2D to provide longer on-station times at greater ranges, extending its mission. According to Northrop Grumman, the new upgrade includes the probe and associated piping, electrical and lighting upgrades, and long endurance seats that will enhance field of view in the cockpit and reduce fatigue over longer missions. The E-2D's aerial refueling capability has under development since 2013, when the Navy awarded Northrop Grumman an engineering, manufacturing, and development contract. Testing, which will include three modified aircraft, will continue through 2018. The Navy expects to start a production cut-in in 2018 and start retrofits that year. The E-2D is a particularly important asset for the U.S. Navy because of its state-of-the-art radar as Rear ADM Mike Manazir, then the Navy's Director of Air Warfare. Described the concept in detail to me and my good friend Sam Legrone at the U.S. Naval Institute just before Christmas in 2013. The E-2D is the Navy's primary means of defending against low observable cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, and enemy aircraft. And, indeed, given the capabilities of its UHF band radar, the E-2D may be the Navy's trump card against future Russian and Chinese stealth aircraft. The E-2D's Lockheed Martin and APY-9 UHF band radar is the central feature of the Advanced Hawkeye. Both friend and foe alike have touted UHF radars as an effective countermeasure to stealth technology. One early public example of that is a paper prepared by Arne Wester that appeared in the National Defense University's Joint Forces Quarterly Academic Journal in the fourth quarter issue of 2009. It is the physics of longer wavelength and resonance that enables VHF and UHF radar to detect stealth aircraft, Westra wrote in his article, titled Radar vs. Stealth. UHF band radars operate at frequencies between 300 MHz and 1 GHz, which results in wavelengths that are between 10 cm and 1 m long. Typically, due to the physical characteristics of fighter-sized stealth aircraft, they must be optimized to defeat higher frequencies in the Ka, Ku, X, C, and parts of the S-bands. There is a resonance effect that occurs when a feature on an aircraft, such as a tail fin tip, is less than eight times the size of a particular frequency wavelength. That omnidirectional resonance effect produces a step change in an aircraft's radar cross-section. Effectively, what that means is that small stealth aircraft that do not have the size or weight allowances for two feet or more of radar absorbent material coatings on every surface are forced to make trades as to which frequency bands they are optimized for. That would include aircraft like the Chengdu J-20, Shenyang J-31, Sukhoi PAKFA, and, indeed, the United States' own Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor and Tri-Service F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. Only very large stealth aircraft without protruding impenage surfaces, like the Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit or the forthcoming Long Range Strike Bomber, can meet the requirement for geometrical optics regime scattering. Effectively, that means the E-2Ds and APY-9 radar can see stealth aircraft like the J-20 or J-31. 